everybody, it's Lon Sivan, and it's time for another weekly wrap up. And I want to begin, as I always do, by thanking our newest Patreon supporters. And we got Ray Bad Servo Taylor, Billy Laptop. We've got some great uh, nicknames here today, uh, and Robert Santalon, who actually has a YouTube channel himself. It's called Your Geeky Tipster. I'll put a link uh, up above and down below in the description so you can check out his channel. I want to thank all of you for supporting the channel on the Patreon, and I'll talk more about Patreon in a few minutes, a little bit later in the wrap up. So this week I didn't get all that many videos uploaded, but I worked on a bunch. In fact, tomorrow you're going to see uh, three videos all posting in the morning for a sponsored project that I was working on. I think you'll find it interesting, actually, especially if you like uh, network attached storage. So we'll uh, have that loading up in the morning. But in the meantime, we looked at the Samsung T3. It's another portable solid state drive. And what I found with this one is that it's not as fast as the old model, which was the T1. They skipped over the T2 for some reason, so they went from T1 to T3, and the T3 now is a little bit slower than last year's T1, but you can see the whole review uh, linked above in our master playlist. Uh, we also got a look at the Dell XPS line. I figured I would do a comparison of all three of the computers in that line because I had them all here. I thought that was an interesting little comparison to do, and you can all uh, check out that video if you haven't already. And he also appeared on my friend Dan Lavallo's radio show here in Connecticut. We talked about Apple versus the FBI and kind of dissected what was going on uh, with the issue, at least at the time that we recorded the interview. This is one of those stories that changes so frequently. In fact, tonight, right before I started recording, uh, it was announced that the Justice Department is seeking to put a halt to the lawsuit that they have against Apple, uh, at least for the short term, because they may have found a way to get into this phone without Apple's help, which means there's some kind of vulnerability that somebody found in iOS that uh, might get them in, which is really interesting because I'm sure the FBI won't be disclosing that vulnerability to Apple. We've seen many times in the past that uh, the NSA, our national security agency here in the United States, or sometimes even regular law enforcement, uh, gets a hold of unpatched vulnerabilities and takes advantage of them, and they don't always announce it to the rest of the security community that these things exist. And I wonder uh, how this is going to play out now. So if the FBI knows something that Apple should know, are we going to see another lawsuit where Apple tries to force them to actually say what they found so that Apple can patch it for other customers? Because if there's a vulnerability that uh, can get into this terrorist's phone, they can get into everybody's phone that's uh, currently uh, unlocked at the moment. So this is going to be quite a story as it plays out. Two Goliaths. We've got uh, the best of the best, both in the legal world on Apple and the government side, as well as the PR world on Apple and the government side, uh, just going at each other in court and in the court of public opinion, too. And it's been uh, really fascinating to watch this play out. And at some point, we're going to have to get to some kind of balance point here. We saw this happen when uh, the telephone was invented and the government started wiretapping people's phones without permission, without a warrant. Not without, you, know, you don't always give permission to have your line wiretapped, but usually there's a warrant, uh, at least nowadays, that has to get issued. And I think at some point we're going to have to find the same kind of balance with uh, these phones and the encryption. And I hope it doesn't involve backdoor. I hope they find uh, some way to make this work that protects everybody. And at the end of the day, if people want to encrypt things, uh, they can without having to store their keys with Apple or anyone else. There's certainly lots of free and open source software out there to do it. So this is not going to go away anytime soon. And uh, as many of you know, it's also very difficult, if not impossible, uh, to legislate or sue your way uh, out of a math equation, which is what encryption is all about. So let's see how this plays out. And I'm sure I'll be talking more and more about it uh, as this story continues to develop and we hear more about it as things happen. So stay tuned for more. So the new studio is still coming along. We got the sheetrock up. I'm going to be, I'm not doing it, the, the taping guy is doing it. We're going to be taping up the sheetrock tomorrow, hopefully get some painting done next week. I'm going to pick out carpet soon, going to get my tile for the bathroom in there. It's going to be really nice when it's done, and I think we're moving along at a really good pace here, and I'm very excited to show you more next week when we have a little bit more done down there so we can see some progress going on. Time for some Q&A, and what do we got this week? I got a couple of questions here, and our first question is going to be a two-parter. It's going to be a question from John Simpson here who's wondering uh, what the best value of handheld Android emulation gaming devices are. He's wondering if my GPD XD recommendation is still my current recommendation, and it is. I really think the GPD XD, which I reviewed over the summer and was one of my top picks of 2015, uh, is one of the best Android gaming devices out there at the moment, especially for people that want to emulate. Uh, you've got everything you need on it. It's got a great controller, a really nice screen, 
Good performance also. It's got a rock chip processor, so it can pretty much do everything from like the PlayStation backwards. You might be able to squeeze a little bit of Dreamcast emulation out of it, a little bit slower on the newer stuff, but uh, for the stuff that I play, it's great, and I really uh, do like it quite a bit. Now, I said this was a two-parter because I have a question for all of you, uh, which are, uh, what's the best Android file syncing application? Because what I want to be able to do is uh, sync my save games and save state files between my handheld and my NVIDIA Shield devices because they're all running Android, both the uh, NVIDIA Shield as well as the GPD XD, and I'm running the same emulators on both. So I, it's conceivable that I should be able to just have these files uh, sync up between the devices so I could play a little bit on my TV, and then if I'm out, uh, that save game would sync back to my Android device. I'm thinking I'm going to try it with my uh, Synology drives because they have an app uh, for file syncing that will sync to my NAS as well as to uh, my NVIDIA Shield, presumably, and the GPD handheld. But I'd love to know if there are, are other uh, syncing applications that you all use that you think I should be taking a look at, whether it's over the, uh, the cloud or if something that just syncs internally within my network. Either one would be fine. Uh, it would be really cool to have a save game that I could pass back and forth between devices, and uh, wherever I go, I'm up to date on my uh, emulation, which is something you couldn't do back in the 90s. I'd love to be able to do it now, so that'd be kind of a neat thing. So make me some recommendations on that uh, down in the comments below. Our next question comes from Phil Leo, also an Android question. He's wondering why Pac-Man 256 needs to uh, install permission to the camera, media devices, microphone, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and he's wondering why it needs all that stuff. And uh, this is a good question. This comes up from time to time. We see it in the media all the time. And on Facebook, our friends are wondering why our applications want all this extra permissions. And uh, every game has different things that it needs. And I think in the case of the camera on the Pac-Man game is that it allows you to upload a photo or a, or a, a screenshot uh, of your high score, and I think it needs camera access to save that image into your uh, photo library. I might be mistaken, but I think that's why it needs that. Uh, so that's why it asks for all those things up front. The microphone, I'm not sure about. I don't really think it needs the microphone for uh, what it is, but sometimes app developers just ask for everything, so if they want to do something later in a future update, they can do it without having to uh, have people re-enable the feature and sometimes have it break if they don't allow that permission through. And that's one of the differences between Android and iOS, where Android asks for the permissions up front, uh, iOS will ask you when you first implement it. So on Pac-Man on the iPhone, uh, when it goes to do that screenshot thing and it wants access to my photo, uh, photo roll, it asks me at the time that it needs it versus uh, when I first installed the app. But uh, either way, I think this really speaks to why you should be careful about where you get your applications from. So if you get like the pirated version of some Android application, when you give that pirated application permission to do stuff on your Android device, it's going to, it could do things that you don't want it to do that maybe somebody slipped into that file. So you really want to be careful about where you get your apps from and make sure they're coming from trusted sources because this is the kind of stuff that uh, when you give uh, anyone permission to use your camera, they have access to that camera through that app and that might be something you don't want to have happen. So just be very careful uh, where you install things to. I'd love to have a, a bigger discussion about this. So if you have anything you want to add to that, leave it in the comments below. So this week we should have a lot of videos up on the channel because we got the three that are going up uh, in the morning. It's almost an hour of content you'll have added in the morning. And I've got some other stuff that I am really hoping to get done. I wanted to bring up though my Intel Compute Stick, which I'm still happy with, but I'm having trouble getting alternative operating systems on it. Even Ubuntu is not booting up on here at the moment. So I'm gonna keep playing with this, but if you're wondering where my alternative OS video is on the Intel Compute Stick, I'm still troubleshooting. I may need to get a BIOS update uh, on this thing first. So even Remix OS couldn't boot. I got the uh, read-only version booting, but the Wi-Fi didn't work. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm still troubleshooting on the compute stick. So stay tuned. If I am able to get it working, uh, you'll see a video. If not, uh, you'll see it in a wrap-up video where I just say I gave up and uh, put the uh, put it up on the auction market for someone else to take over. Uh, we also got this thing. Some, some of you were actually really eager to see this. This is the uh, Mobile Light Wireless Pro. And this is kind of like a Swiss Army knife for your mobile phone. So it's got a battery inside that can charge your phone. Uh, you can also use it as storage. So it's got 64 gigabytes from Kingston, by the way, 64 gigabytes of storage inside. You can plug in a SD card as well as a USB stick to it. You can move files around on, onto it, off of it, onto, onto the card and off the card. It's got a lot of flexibility, uh, kind of a neat little product. So we'll check this out. So battery and storage uh, in a device that you can carry around with you. And it can act as a little mobile hotspot also. So we'll go through all of that uh, when we do the review. This is a revision of one we looked at last year. So this is the next generation 
generation version of that product. I also got in the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad T460S, and this is a business laptop, kind of continuing the IBM ThinkPad legacy here. So a really nice, sturdy uh, machine that's pretty rugged. So we'll be checking that one out hopefully later this week. I also just did this tonight. Uh, we shot an interview with uh, Dylan Callahan, who's the guy uh, who's leading the team. There's the three of them right now uh, behind porting Chromium OS over to the Raspberry Pi. Chromium OS is the open source version of Chrome OS. And uh, he talks about some of the things they're working on, some of their plans, as well as some of the other single board computers they are hoping to support with their project too. So that will be coming up. And I'm still working on this one. We got in the uh, Mist FPGA computer. This is a really neat project. Uh, it's got a lot of open source software behind it. And I talked a lot about this already, but in a nutshell, what it is is a, a device running with a field programmable gate array as its processor. So that, that chip can be programmed to behave like other chips. So it's very different from emulation, it's simulation. Uh, and it's able to really uh, very accurately uh, replicate old hardware. So I'm still uh, playing around with it. Once I get a few more things installed on it, I will schedule a live stream where we'll just kind of play with it for an hour uh, and talk about that. And I'm going to do a giveaway on that one also. I'm going to probably give away this uh, mobile light thing uh, as well as that Kingston uh, memory stick we looked at a couple of weeks ago. So I'll get all that stuff out to you in the email list at lon.tv slash email uh, once I get it scheduled. It's been a, a chaotic couple of months here with uh, all good things uh, with uh, the family growing and trying to get ready for all of that. So I've been in between videos, moving things around, which is why I'm in this room right now because we got the basement under construction. This house is a disaster right now. So it's been a little chaotic and uh, trying to find time to do a nice live stream. But I'm gonna figure out a, a window I can squeeze in and let all of you know when we're gonna do that and we'll have it done. And that also means I hope to get to this, uh, com this, uh, <laughs> this thing I keep talking about. This is a uh, Azul PC on a stick with ethernet. And this actually performs just like the other Azul stick we looked at. So I'm trying to find uh, a neat way to show the differences. And I think I'm going to show uh, how Ethernet works when you're streaming media versus Wi-Fi on a low-end PC. That's what I'm going to probably focus on. So once I get a little bit more time, you will see that one soon. Now, if you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel. Uh, we also have fan funding set up at lon.tv uh, where you can make a one-time contribution to the channel. If you do fan funding, Send me an email at lon at lon.tv to let me know you did it so I can thank you at the beginning of the broadcast because I don't always get notified when somebody does a fan funding contribution. I don't want to miss it. So I do want to thank everyone who does contribute onto the channel. Now, what I'm doing with this money right now is I'm buying things to review on the channel like the compute stick. And then when I resell the items, I lose a little bit of money. So this fund helps offset that. But once I get down in the basement and I get my LLC formed, I'm going to transition this over to our uh, part-time helper who's uh, going to be funded uh, out of this bucket of money in addition to some that I'll put in also uh, because I really want to start doing more in-depth stuff because people are asking about certain games running on certain hardware and I want to start doing kind of like a sub-channel where we uh, look at some of those requests in, in a little bit more detail on the low-end PCs and he'll also be helping me out with other things on the channel too because there's a lot of prep work that goes into everything I do uh, so the more that I can get prepped for me the more video I can produce so that is why uh, I'm really looking forward to getting down to that new studio space and having a real office to work out of. You know, be, and right now I'm kind of like just floating around my house into whatever available space there is. It's going to be nice to have a dedicated space. We also have my Amazon affiliate link at lon.tv slash Amazon that'll take you right into my uh, Amazon review page. And then anything you buy on Amazon after that uh, will help the channel. So there's a small portion of the sale that uh, gets uh, pushed back to us as a commission, but it doesn't impact your price at all. So if you want to help the channel in a passive way while you're shopping at Amazon, lon.tv slash Amazon will help you do that. So there's plenty of ways to engage with the channel. We got my uh, email list at lon.tv slash email. So sign up for that if you want to get notified on the next live stream where we'll do that missed FPGA computer. We also have the Facebook page at lon.tv slash Facebook. And what I've been doing there is just posting links of things that uh, interest me, geeky, techy kind of things. And that's been fun. So check that out. We got almost 1,200 people on there now. Uh, lon.tv slash forums and lon.tv slash Reddit. And I really want you all to start putting up uh, things you want me to review on the Reddit page so that we can all uh, vote it up or down just so I can get a sense as to what the community is looking for. I'm getting so many requests in the comments, I can't keep up with it all. Uh, so having it on the Reddit page will be really helpful and I, it'll really help too because the moderators can uh, keep an eye on things and we can start seeing what uh, has the most interest out there, especially for things that don't have a large retail presence. Uh, I'd like to know what interest is out there from subscribers before I go out and buy something because likely I'm not going to make any money back or even break even on 
uh, the things that don't have a large search uh, potential. So you know, really gauging what you're interested in will actually be a good gauge of what the search potential might be for that. And as you all know, about 90% of my traffic comes from search. So uh, having something that's going to be searchable and interesting to people is something I definitely want to be focused on. So definitely post it on the Reddit page. I'm going to start directing a lot of you over to the Reddit page also uh, when you do make those requests too. So that's going to do it for this week. Thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate your questions and comments and suggestions. And I am reading every comment, even though I'm not replying to as many as I have been able to lately uh, or in the past. I am definitely reading all of your comments. So please, if you don't see a reply from me, it doesn't mean I didn't see it. And I really appreciate everyone who's taking the time to offer their feedback and support. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.